Oh, hi there. I'm from the Lazy Susan Band. My name is Jay Bell. I'm BPZ Meg. And I'm Two Dollar Bill Turner. And we'd like to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming album, Underneath the Minnesota Moon. So, Jay Bell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, so this album is uh, it's a, it's a new album. It's, how is it different from like the last album you did, or uh, Eighty Dollar Whiskey? Yeah, well, it's really different than Eighty Dollar Whiskey because Eighty Dollar Whiskey was something that uh, I really was was really done just by me. I mean, I didn't know that it was going to be a Lazy Susan album when I started. I I wanted to write an album where I got to write, produce, play, and sing everything on an album. And then when it was done, I brought it to you guys, and thankfully you were you were interested in put it out as a Lazy Susan band record with. What I always assumed was an implied understanding that the next album would be the, very different than that. And so that's what this was. This is very much a band album where everybody played their parts and played a role in crafting it and you know, producing it along. And, I mean, what did you guys think about the process for this? I mean, Lady Dollar Whiskey was sort of just brought to you as sort of a finished thing. And this one we've been working on together for a year. I mean, what do you think? So, so, you, so you knew the album after Eighty Dollar Whiskey was going to be like a collaborative band effort? instead of like just a solo deal where, where you were locked away in your recording studio, like you wanted to bring us in and, and do that? Yeah, well, I was really, I was really excited that when I finished Eight Dollar Whiskey that you guys wanted to push it as a Lazy Susan Band album. And so whether it was an implied understanding amongst all of us or I just had it sort of internalized that if we were going to do another album, it was very much going to be a band album. And that's what this is. I was just, I was impressed that you asked me. <laughs> and wanted me to be a part of it. I was like, oh, I don't know. I was just, I was very excited. So, yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I just, it was, uh, it was really enjoyable to like, to go through the process and and see the songs as they were, as they came out, um, as you wrote them, and and uh, and as we tried them out together as a band. Um, we did some of them, a few of them live, um, you know, before we mm -hmm. recorded them. Yeah. And, and some of them we didn't. Some of them, like, we had recorded some of the album and you wrote another song and, and we went in yeah. there and, and, yeah. <laughs> and recorded those. Have you, Bill, have you done an album before? Not a, not a released album. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, earthed gems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a vault. There's a lot in the vault. So yeah, no, this was the first, this was the first like, album that I've, that I've been on. And, and, I didn't uh, know that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, which oh. is totally exciting, really exciting to play in the studio. And, and Would you do it again? Of course. Nice. Of course. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I don't know about you guys, but I'm. Yeah. I could not be more excited about yeah. how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's very oh, nice. awesome. Well, let's, let's talk about let's yeah. talk about one of the uh, one of the track the, the first uh, we just recorded a video for the first track of the album, Dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, what can you tell us about that? Like, where did that song come from? What's it about? Dangerous is a song about, I think we've all had people that we've had to cut out of our lives or move on with in our lives. And um, the song is about thinking about those people once you've removed them from your lives and thinking about, you like to assume that they're just forever devastated and can't <laughs> move on at all uh, without you. Uh, and then if you think about, sometimes if you think about them doing well or doing better than you, it can have a negative effect on Mm -hmm. um, how you're thinking about it or feeling. And not necessarily, I wasn't writing it from a, um, an autobiographical standpoint as much as I was watching other people that were going through that, where it's, <laughs> it's tough. It's, it's, hard to watch, it's hard to watch someone else be happy, and it can be dangerous or precarious on your own hmm. ability That's cool. to move on. Is sort of what the song's about. Mm -hmm. well, just to let you know, I am okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm doing alright. I am so bad at cutting you out of my life. I just get trained yeah. for about 20 you minutes. You can't quit me! <laughs> you can't! Alright, okay. Well, so, uh, there's another, the, the, skip to the third track of the album, Fade. That has kind of a dark feel to it. Um, yeah. Uh, is that, what's, what's, what's that all about? Well, that was, um, historically, Lazy Susan Band Records have one, like, up-tempo, danceable blues song, Don't You Need Me Missing. And that's what Fade was supposed to be. I remember that. I <laughs> remember that. Be, that riff was supposed to be a horn riff. <laughs> and then I, the, the lyrics yeah. are about, I, yeah. I started writing it after reading about a particularly horrible account of domestic violence. And so the imagery, a lot of the initial imagery is from that. And then, of course, the song <laughs> slowed way down and got um, much sadder and darker. And what's kind of funny is I was thinking, 
I sort of made me think about other sort of acts of violence and how our society was exploding at the time that I was writing it and how you get so entrenched in situations like that where you feel like if you acknowledge anything from the other side, you're abandoning your own ideals. And while I was thinking about that, I was mixing demos for you guys of the new songs. And I was thinking, well, you don't do that when you're mixing songs. You don't think, well, let's add a mandolin, but then let's take out everything else and just crank up the mandolin. You don't. You, you fade things in and out. And so I was thinking, like, huh, if, we, if two sides of, uh, of an issue or, or an argument could be like that, you just maybe you dial up the empathy a little bit and dial down the knee-jerk reaction and fade in the compassion, <laughs> down the assholicness. Assholicness. <laughs> That's big yeah. ass foolishness. Yes, yes, yeah, so that was the idea. And then it took a while to get that into a groove. And then obviously you guys were there when um, Kim Brown and, and uh, Otis yeah. Turner and Ebony Pittman and Gina Davis came over oh, yeah. and who are professional gospel singers and were, added, were uh, able to really add the finishing touches on yeah. that. How, how did that come about, like the conversation and asking Kim uh, and the others to, to come in and add their voices to, to that song? Like, well, I'm good friends with uh, Grammy Award-winning Kim Brown from The Sounds of Blackness, uh, and I know him through some other through some <laughs> other work. Um, and I'd asked her, I'd told her about the song, and I'd asked her if she would if she would sing on it, and she said absolutely. And when I explained to her what I wanted, she said, "Why well, I, I rehearse every Tuesday with a gospel quartet, and we just we basically rehearse on the fly, throwing arrangements together." So. Huh. If you did a recording session on a Tuesday, we could just do it at your studio, and like our rehearsal could be working out your tune on the fly. And so they came over here, and we had pizza and wine, I think. And yep. yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty awesome. I remember huh. er, Jonathan Earl, who produced the record, they did their first take, and he turned to me and he said, They're better singers than we are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. How dare he? Yeah. Yeah. And then later, when it was done, we were in the control room. Uh, and he said, how am I going to mix all this soul into your white boy country rock? And Otis was in the, had his headphones on and he goes, we can hear you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Should we take a break uh, and sure. hear from our sponsors for the CD release show? Yes, totally. That's uh, Mexican Moonshine Tequila, oh, yeah. the finest organic 100% agave tequila mm. in the land, which will be flowing freely on October 21st at Whiskey Junction. Thank <laughs> you. 